Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 11, episode two. So did anybody else notice that when the show came on, maybe two or three minutes into the episode, they were playing Erica's song, It's Expensive to Be Me, and she was at her quote office and she had all of her wardrobe, well, not even all of it, but she had all of these racks of clothes there and a whole staff. It was about three, maybe four people. They were picking out her outfits for Lake Tahoe. And I said, ooh, first of all, shady, shady, bravo. Second of all, that just rubs me all the way wrong. Why do you need three to five people to help you pick out your clothes. With everything that's going on in her life right now, it just seems to be way too much. Sutton stops by Erica's office and they have a little conversation and it was really cute to see Sutton and Erica getting along. And then I remembered the previews for this season and they end up having that big blow up and I said, oh, this is the calm before the storm. Sutton starts talking about how she just bought her own home and it's the first home she's purchased without her husband. And she says that she's building a home because she had a hard time finding a home that she really liked. And I said, wasn't it last week's episode they showed the house and it was already built and she was saying something about it needed renovations and that's why she was renting out Kyle's place? I don't know, maybe she means renovation, remodeling, Maybe she's gonna tear it down to the studs and I have no idea. I really don't. But when someone says build a home, I'm thinking that it's a big pile of dirt. And then all of a sudden these people show up and they build something. I don't know. I'm thinking too much. Moving on. Garcelle meets up with Kyle for lunch and Kyle pretty much tried to pull a Rena. She came right in and says, you know what? I don't know why we got off on such a bad note. You know, I just want to forget about it. Let's start over. Let's start fresh. Let's hug it out and, you know, apologize and move forward. And Garcelle says, ah, 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 not too fast. And I'm with Garcelle. Would you have said it to one of the white women? You. I know you probably didn't intentionally, but I don't think you realize the I mean, effect that it has on me being a black woman. There's stereotypes that people think that we don't pay for our rent, that we don't tip. I would There's never so even think about that. Because you don't have to deal with that because it's not your reality, but it's my reality. I was really happy that Garcelle had this conversation with Kyle and I was really glad to see that Kyle was open to listening. Um, I got a little emotional listening to the conversation because I've been there. I've been that girl at the restaurant that people didn't want to serve or people had that idea that African-American people don't tip. It's so crazy. I remember one time I was with a group of people from work and one of my coworkers, she just said, can I ask you a question? And she says, I've always heard that um, African-American people don't tip. Is that true? No. That is absolutely not true. I mean, yes, of course, there are some people that don't. I mean, there's people of all races who don't tip, but that is not true. I'm telling you right now, I never tip less than 18%. And if I give you 18%, that means that you were not that great. I have never gone to any restaurants, any place, and not tipped at least 18%. If you were just okay, I tip 18%. If you were really good, I will tip you anywhere from 20 to 25%. And that's because I appreciate good service. I really do love that Garcelle brought this up. I have been there. So I know the feeling. I'm sorry, let me get out of my feelings. I just wanna say that anybody who believes that all African-American people don't tip, don't be fooled. That's not true. Now, when she asked Kyle about the donation, the bid, and why she brought that up, and she asked Kyle, was it because she was black? Um, no, I don't think that. You know, I think that Kyle wanted to embarrass her because she was pissed off with her, but I don't think it had anything to do with race. I don't believe that Kyle is racist, has ever been racist, will be racist. I do not think that Kyle is racist. I don't. 
I think she just wanted to piss off Garcelle and embarrass her because she was angry with Garcelle. So they share Crystal with us a little bit and we see her at home with her children, her husband, her brother, and her Lucy. And I really like her. You know, she spent a little time bragging on her husband, but you know what? If my husband was this famous director, I'd brag about him all the time. As a matter of fact, my husband could be just a really good plumber and I would brag about him. You know what I mean? I don't mind bragging on my people. Anyway, she makes this comment about her husband, you know, being such a busy director and with the kids and everything, her schedule is hectic. So I said, really, girl, you've got your brother who you're using as a nanny, who is an actual pop star in China. And then you have Lucy. Your brother's also running the kids from here to there. How busy are you? I don't know. But anyway, at the end of all of this and her showing her life and her hectic schedule, her color-coded calendar... I still like her. Crystal is win-win with me. I think she's going to be a really good addition to the show. So Bravo was being shady again. When the ladies start arriving at the airport, the private airstrip, you know, they have Lisa Renna show up with Garcelle at the same time. Very awkward moments. Very awkward moments. Thank goodness all of a sudden Kyle shows up. Then we find out that Kathy Hilton has never gone on a girl's trip. I said, that's very different. To me, I don't know why I was surprised by that, but I really was. Um, she says that when all the other girls are going out on all these fabulous spa trips, she's doing it with her husband. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with husbands and wives having vacations and going on romantic trips. But every now and again, I need a girl's trip. I really do. I need a grown woman girl's trip so that I can just be free not to be somebody's mama. I need a good girl's trip where I can just act out. Okay, I'm not going to tell you about my acting out, but you know, a good acted out trip. That's what I need in my life. I need that right now, but I'm going on family vacations. So I'm going to be good for the most part. What I also liked is when they get on this plane, Garcelle is scared to death. And they bring up a flashback of last season at the reunion when they were all ticked off at Garcelle for not getting on that tiny plane to fly all the way to New York. And she said that she's afraid of small planes and they were all rolling their eyes, especially Lisa Renna. I said, well, now she has proven it. You have all seen it. The woman is afraid of small planes. Let it go. Now look, Lake Tahoe, the little bit that they showed was absolutely beautiful. And I am absolutely adding that to my list of places to go. I do have this list. I have this beautiful pink little binder and in the binder on the second page, it has all the places that I wanna visit in my life. And I've been able to cross off quite a few. So I have a little space I can add Lake Tahoe. Anyway, they stay at the Sherman Estate, which has 17 bedrooms, 18 bathrooms. Did you hear that, Jennifer from New Jersey? They have 18 bathrooms. It's 15 acres and 17,000 square feet. This place was absolutely gorgeous. They had a bar, an indoor pool. I mean, this place had an indoor movie theater. They had everything, including possibly bears on the lower level. I don't play that. Mm -mm. Put me up on the second or third level, even though I'm pretty sure bears can climb the steps. I don't know. Just put me up there anyway. On floor. Bears have access to the ground level. Oh, Get the out of here. <laughs> You don't tell a black girl that twice, honey. We do not do bears. See, Garcelle felt the same as me. It just moved me on up the steps. It's a second layer of safety. Now, Sutton turned into a baby Ramona. She, up, she makes the comment that they have to bring their own bags in. And then she asks Garcelle about a butler. Garcelle says, I don't know where a butler is. And then all of a sudden, Dorit is upset about carrying her bags. And I said, well, let this be a lesson to you. Stop packing so much. You're only going to be away for about, I think they're only going to be gone for a week or a weekend. Why do you need six suitcases, two carry-ons, and a duffel bag? Cut the crap. I absolutely want you out there carrying everything in. So the estate the Sherman estate, comes with a personal chef, but Kyle has decided that she's gonna make dinner. And she says she's gonna give the personal chef the evening off. And then she proceeds to 
ask the woman for all kinds of help. Could you get this? Could you get that? Do you think you can get this? I said, oh, so now she went from the personal executive chef in this estate to your sous chef? Kyle? Kyle? <laughs> oh my God. Hi, honey. Oh, <laughs> you look so much like Kyle. The long, dark hair. I, is it uncanny? Unbelievable. That. Hilarious. That was absolutely funny. Listen, while she's laughing and joking and cutting up, she forgets that the salmon is in the oven. And the personal chef, I guess she went ahead and took the night off. Didn't mention a thing. And the salmon burnt. Not blackened. This is burnt fish. It's real. I said the same thing. When she said it's blackened salmon, I said, no, ma'am, that's burnt salmon. I'll just eat the pasta. Uh-uh. Sudden being the lady of gift. I still cannot forget that purse she bought the girls last season. That purse was so nice. Anyway, this season she bought all the girls their own personal flask with their initials on them. And I thought, this is really cute. I've never had a flask. Um, I've never used a flask, no. Well, Crystal has never had a flask either. But you know what? Just because it's a flask doesn't mean that you have to put alcohol in it. Kathy is gonna use hers for her mouthwash which, okay, I personally, a little lemonade, whatever. You know, you can use it on any occasion. It's a beautiful flask. You don't even have to use it. You could just put it somewhere as a little showpiece. It's a beautiful silver flask with your initials on it. Two truths and one lie. I've been arrested. I worked at an escort agency. I've been propositioned to become a madam. What's the lie? Arrested. Honey, listen, this woman is really good at this game. I, listen, I like her. I like her. I'm a good liar. I am not a good liar. You know what? That woman lies every time she opens her mouth. I mean, come on. Even her eyes lie. And she's not good at lying. Whew, honey. Girl, stop it. Kathy has no idea how to play two truths and a lie. She told all the truths. Thank you for playing. This is your first girl's trip, I get you. I understand. Garcelle does the right thing. She sits down to have a conversation with Lisa Renna to clear the air, to let her know that everything is not okay. You know, your behavior last season, the way you treated Denise, the way you tried to treat me, not all right. Telling you something that I'm feeling that I'm going through and so, not knowing that it's going to backfire. I can't promise you that. And that's absolutely why I would never have a friendship with her. Garcelle, you're wasting your time dealing with her. If you cannot promise that you are not going to treat me the way you treated Denise, that you're not gonna throw me under the bus, that you're not gonna lie to me, that you're not gonna be disrespectful to me, then there is no friendship, there is no conversation. This is a cordial situation. Hello, how are you? Bye girl. That's what, it, that's what we have. That is what we have. Listen, Lisa Renna is not a friend to anybody. And before the end of this season, I'm pretty sure she's going to prove that she cannot keep anyone's secret. I am i wouldn't be surprised if two or three of the women are thrown under the bus by Lisa by the end of this season. With, you know, she said with black people and not paying their bills, mm -hmm. I would never know. I've had friends who've said things to me Asian comments and stuff like that. No, do do Garcelle and I share the same exact sorry. ones? No. I am no, not going to do this. I, I am not, I am not doing this. I'm going to tell you right now. You're not doing what? I am not talking about racial stereotypes when I am. Well, it's easy for you not to. You probably Why? You have a lot. Everyone because does. what? I'm a Southern white girl. Wanna, are you 20, one of those people 21. that you don't see color? Tell me you're that girl. I don't see color. All right now. Team Crystal. Kyle, she really lost some points with me. I was really excited after her and Garcelle spoke, but you know what, why bring this up again? You embarrassed Garcelle when you brought that up. So now you wanna bring it up and rehash it with Crystal? Not okay. And sudden, what happened, honey? What triggered you, okay? You did not have to jump into that conversation, not at all. Why didn't she at least let Crystal finish what she was saying before she jumped in? And this whole argument would not have popped off the way it did. Something triggered Sutton, and I have no idea what it was, but I'm very interested in seeing the next episode to find out how this conversation ends. But I'm side-eyeing Sutton now. What is the deal?
I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I still like Sutton. I think that something triggered her. She got upset. She got worried. I don't know if she got nervous. I don't know if she thought somebody all of a sudden was saying something bad about her. I have no idea. I like her. I'm going to, you know, jump to any conclusions about Sutton. I do not think that she is a racist. I do not think that Kyle is a racist. And I, and I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Anyway, I thought it was a decent episode. Was it the best episode I've ever seen of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? No, it wasn't. But it was better than any of those episodes from last season. I can tell you that. And until next time, bye.